suspect you may have depression or any mental health condition, we highly advise you to seek help from a qualified mental health professional. Number one, cheerful, optimistic, and generally happy, only on the outside. Are you able to get up, go to work, and interact with others without showing how bad you may be feeling inside? According to Heidi McKenzie, a clinical psychologist practicing in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, smiling depression is another name for high functioning depression or persistent depressive disorder. This may mean that you are able to function normally and go about your day like any other person, even though you may be experiencing symptoms of depression internally. Two, you're obsessed with showing others how perfect your life is on social media. Do the things you post on social media reflect what's happening in your actual life? While it's normal to share only your best moments, actively trying to create an online presence to look like you're living the perfect life may be harmful to your mental well-being. Posting photos to show others how happy you are when you're not in real life may only serve to create a void that gives smiling depression room to grow. You're reluctant to seek help because you're concerned about appearing weak. Ever heard of the saying, real men don't cry? Statistics have shown that men are far less likely than women to seek help for mental health problems. This may be because they fear being judged or treated differently for their depressive symptoms. As a result, they may be more likely to put on a happy appearance and keep their feelings to themselves. You fake a smile even though you're going through some big life changes. Have you ever lost your job or moved to a different country? As with other types of depression, smiling depression can be triggered by big life changes. Whether it's a breakup with a loved one or the death of somebody close to you, these large changes may bring about symptoms of depression as well as a pressure to keep up an appearance that you are unaffected. You throw yourself into hobbies and work to keep busy. Have you found yourself working overtime lately? Whether it's work, chores, or hobbies, people with smiling depression may throw themselves into being busy to avoid confronting how they really feel. This avoidance to acknowledge and address your emotions can be harmful and may lead to emotional and physical burnout. And number six, you struggle with denial. Diagnosing people with smiling depression is difficult for many reasons. Firstly, some people might not even be aware that they are depressed, and those who are aware often refuse to or don't seek help. Furthermore, according to a paper from the World Health Organization, smiling depression presents with conflicting symptoms compared to classic depression, which just in law and in medicine are at a higher risk for depression. The rates of depression are also higher among those with a history of substance use. Men are reported to have a lower rate of depression than women. Studies have reported that 8.7% of women and 5.3% of men have depression. This may be because men are less likely to report their depression due to the stigma and fear of being seen as weak. According to Brooklyn, New York-based therapist Justin Lioy, who specializes in men's counseling, depression in men is often masked by anger and irritability. Untreated depression is the most common cause of suicide. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, 45% of those who commit suicide are suffering from some sort of mental illness, including depression. Therefore, proper diagnosis and treatment for depression is very important, as it may help prevent suicides. If you or a loved one is experiencing suicidal thoughts, call your local suicide prevention number or helpline. Many who suffer from depression also have anxiety. Did you know that nearly 50% of all people diagnosed with major depression also suffer from an anxiety disorder? While not everyone with depression will also have anxiety, these two mental illnesses are closely linked. So, it's important to discuss your symptoms with a doctor to receive the correct diagnosis. People with depression can't just snap out of it. The biggest misconception about being depressed is that you can just snap out of it, but depression is actually much more complex than that. More often than not, someone with depression or any mental illness has very little control over how they feel. Saying that they can just stop being depressed is insensitive and frustrating to those who are experiencing and struggling to cope with it. Number six is not the same as being sad. While many people may use depression and sadness interchangeably, they mean two different things. Sadness is a common emotion and reaction to when you get upset, and it usually lifts after a few hours or days. 
However, depression is much more persistent, lasting for weeks, months, or even years, and it can negatively impact your daily functioning. Depression is linked to changes in brain chemistry. Did you know that depression has been linked to an imbalance of neurotransmitters in your brain? This includes dopamine, which regulates emotion and memory, serotonin, the feel-good chemical that regulates mood and sense of well-being, and norepinephrine, which impacts your heart rate and blood pressure during fight-or-flight situations. The theory is that having too much or too little of these neurotransmitters can cause or contribute to depression. There are different causes of depression. While the causes of depression aren't completely understood, it is likely that it's caused by a combination of factors. Genetics or environmental factors may play a part. Seasonal affective disorder, which is a depressive disorder caused by changing seasonal patterns, is triggered by disruptions of the circadian rhythm of the body. Changes in the production or function of hormones, including pregnancy, menopause, or thyroid issues, may contribute to depression. Grief, trauma, and chronic stress are also possible triggers of depression. Depression is treatable. Some people may believe that depression isn't treatable and therefore refuse to ask for help. However, there are actually so many different and effective treatment options and therapeutic approaches available. Cognitive behavioral therapy, social skills therapy, supportive counseling, and behavioral activation are only some of the options to choose from. Numbing isn't a choice. It's important to know that no one chooses to be depressed. While being depressed or having any other mental illness is not a choice, how you decide to deal or cope with it is. Choosing to do nothing or deny you have a problem may only result in worsening your symptoms. Number 11 can be another symptom of depression. There are many factors that can cause someone to become depressed, one of which can be chronic pain or discomfort. Being in physical pain for a long period of time may lead to depressive thoughts and eventual depression. Nothing distorts your thinking. When you are depressed, it may feel like your mind is starting to play tricks on you. Negative thinking patterns may distort your view of your relationships with others, as well as your environment, and contribute to feelings of paranoia, anxiety, and even thoughts about self-harm. Therefore, it's crucial to seek help and support so your negative and distorted view of the world doesn't worsen your symptoms. Do you really easy, unmotivated, and uninspired from time to time? And it's normal to feel like that. But we live in such a hyper-competitive society that's so hyper-focused on pursuing success and wealth that it's made us feel internally guilty for the time we spend not working towards something productive. When you overwork yourself to exhaustion and are dealing with chronic stress, it will inevitably have adverse effects on your mental and emotional health. But what if it could be more than that? What if your laziness is more than just you feeling burnt out? Here are six warning signs of depression that are more than just laziness. Number one, you can't snap yourself out of it. A sense of laziness usually creeps in when you're overly stressed or if you've been working too hard for too long. And there are a lot of nifty tips and tricks you can use to snap yourself out of it, like making a to-do list, listening to motivational talks, or setting achievable goals. But when it's depression, depression isn't a choice, and it's definitely not something you can just shake off or get over, no matter what other people tell you. Depression is a serious mental illness that needs to be treated with professional help and medication if required. Oftentimes, depressive episodes can recur throughout your life, so months of therapy may be needed to help you cope. Number two, you can't cheer yourself up. Do you often struggle with feelings of unexplained loneliness, sadness, and hopelessness? Do you feel exhausted all the time and rarely have any energy? You might be feeling downcast and disheartened for reasons you just don't understand. And nothing you do seems to cheer you up or make you feel better. No amount of sleep, Comfort food, self-care activities, or fun times with friends seem to do much to brighten your spirits. When you're battling depression, not even doing the things you used to love the most or spending time with your loved ones can make you feel better. Number three, you've lost interest in everything. According to the American Psychological Association, a markedly diminished interest of pleasure in activities is one of the hallmarks of a depressive episode. So if you found that your laziness has made you lose motivation and interest in everything, including school and work, 
then that's a sure sign that something is seriously wrong with your mental health. With depression, you tend to lose interest in your hobbies and emotionally withdraw from those around you. You prefer to stay at home and lay in bed, doing nothing most of the day because you just can't find it in yourself to care enough about much of anything anymore. Number four, you can't function like you used to. Do you feel that your laziness is getting out of hand? Has it become too much for you to manage? Is it getting in the way of your work, your school, or your personal life? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you may be dealing with depression. In diagnosing depression, psychologists tend to look at the four Ds of abnormality. They are deviance, distress, danger, and dysfunction. So if your laziness is making you dysfunctional, significantly interferes with your everyday tasks, and feels like a constant hurdle in your life, then it may be time to see a mental health care professional about it. Number five, your laziness isn't triggered by anything. Oftentimes, laziness manifests as procrastination and may be brought on by a number of different reasons. Some believe a sense of laziness reflects a lack of self-esteem, while others would argue it's because of a lack of positive recognition from others. It could also be due to a lack of discipline, self-control, and interest. But what about depression? What brings about depression? Well, the truth is, psychologists don't really know. But one thing we do know for sure is that it isn't usually triggered by just one particular thing. There isn't always a clear reason for why depression might develop. So if you find yourself feeling down, disheartened and unenergetic all of a sudden, depression may be the reason why. And number six, your laziness isn't a choice. Finally, but perhaps most importantly, the key difference between depression and laziness is that while laziness can be changed, depression isn't so easily altered. If you're feeling tired or unmotivated, you can do something to change that for yourself. You can rest, brainstorm, look for inspiration, and try out different productivity hacks to help you get out of your funk. But with depression, it's not that easy. It's not a funk that you can just get out of. When you have depression, you're not making the choice to be depressed or stay depressed. In fact, patients with depression often report feelings of extreme guilt, shame, and helplessness due to their depression. No one with depression is ever just doing it for attention. Mental illness goes so much deeper than that. Can you relate to any of the signs of depression in this video? If you or anyone you know is experiencing serious feelings of depression, don't hesitate to reach out to a mental health care professional and get help.